So what I do before I paint a picture at all, once the sketch is done, I adhere it to one of my frames. I'm just using picture frames. They're about, I think they're 11 by 14. Okay, here's an image of just the frame. So this is 11 by 14. My paper is 9 by 12, so this works out really well. Since I'm not working on a huge piece of paper, I was able to get these frames at the dollar store for a dollar each, and I picked up six of them because I like to be able to work on at least two or more paintings at one time. So on paper this size, I come into the paper, about, it's probably about three-eighths of an inch. Okay, it's definitely not a half an inch. This actually looks a little bit more like a quarter. All right, so it probably fluctuates a little bit, somewhere between a quarter and three-eighths. Go for three-eighths. On really large pieces of paper, I would go in about a half an inch because you want a little extra security for a paper that big. And the reason for taping these down is because if, if you've ever tried a painting before and it wasn't taped down, you've probably noticed that your paper dries like the foothills, okay? And it's really frustrating. It never seems to dry flat again. Um, I learned this technique from somebody a long time ago. and. His paintings always dried flat, mine always didn't, and he taught me that this was the secret. So I've been taping down paintings ever since. Okay, the reason I prefer to work on more than one painting at a time is that when I'm in a painting space, meaning I'm in a great space for painting, I have the energy for it, I have the mental space for it, I want to be able to take advantage of that. And so when I come along and I paint a large area like this where I'm maybe letting it dry just enough between coats to be able to put on another coat and I've got maybe three coats in here. I really need to let that dry for a while to um, before I go on to the next layer on this painting. Otherwise I could mess things up. And if I have the energy for painting and I'm you know and I have like the enthusiasm and all of that, I really want to take advantage of that space. So while I'm letting something over here dry, or in this case, I need to think about what I'm going to do in this background. I haven't decided that yet. So I don't want to take a chance of messing this illustration up. I've spent a lot of time on it already. I want to get really clear on what I want to do here. Again, if this was the only painting I was working on, I would have to wait. Uh, and if it takes me a day to think of it, or three hours, that's all that time I'm not working. So for example, while those other paintings were over there drying and allowing me to think about what to do. I started working on this one. Um, this one it has the sky already in. It's got masking fluid on these branches and leaves. I actually, I had originally planned on just doing these mountains, so I had originally just masked up to this line up here where the mountains would end and the other area of the ground would start. But then I realized that I kind of needed to do this in one fell swoop. So I went back in and masked everything else. We have some zebra mast over here. We have some falling leaves over here. Some piles of leaves. I've mostly masked. I've left a few spaces open so that the ground color in here can come through. So that'll look really nice over there. And then this path, I masked that off. So this is what I was working on while while this one was waiting for me to deliberate on what to do. At various points during the painting process, you do get a little bit of the, the rolling foothill effect, but because it's taped down, excuse me, and this will inevitably dry flat, um, be because the green is taking up about three quarters of the space, it may not dry flat just on this coat. Um, I've noticed that when I put the initial primer coat, it actually dries with a little bit of the foothills, but then because I work in different sections, re-wetting different sections, um, eventually the painting ends up flat. So whether it ends up, whether this one ends up flat after this layer or not, it will eventually as I paint in the different trees and the different things in the different areas. I don't really know why it works that way, but it does. tape down your painting, I usually start with the long side 
and it's up your choice. You can come this way or that way. I usually do the top and then the bottom and then the sides, but you have to make sure that the paper is completely flat. If you do go to the top and then the bottom, you don't want there to be like a gape here. Okay, so to remove the tape, you need to start with a top layer piece which for me would be my sides because I put the top and the bottom on first and you need to just delicately start lifting up corner and you want to kind of peel it back sort of like in an angle like this you don't want to come up like straight and rip it all right you want to just carefully remove it and because I had painted his stripes here you can see that it made a little border um, Unfortunately, on this one, I didn't really paint anything else, so there isn't a border, so to speak, around the rest of the painting, like I usually have, because usually my illustrations are completely filled in. So, I need to remove the other side first, or, or next, excuse me. And again, I don't know if you can see it here, I'll try to get a little closer. I don't know if you can see it, but there's no damage at all to this paper. Um, it's a little sticky. It has left a little bit of tack. It might be because I had it on for so long, but in the case of this illustration, none of the top layer of the paper is, um, is coming off at all, though occasionally it does. Alright, I need both my hands now. Okay, so the tape is completely removed. My painting is totally free and I can put it in the box with the rest of the paintings and now my frame is free to be used again. Okay, here is an illustration once the masking tape has been removed. It's very easy to remove masking tape from paper and it usually will not peel up the paper. It did a little bit here, it does happen occasionally, but it doesn't take off very much of a layer so you're not really losing the strength. Um, most of this has been unharmed though completely and this down here is really not a big deal, it's fine. Um, let's take a look at another one. Okay, now here the paint bled a little bit underneath the masking tape and sometimes that happens, but that's okay. I mean this doesn't matter, this would be cropped anyway for, in this case we have children's illustrations here. So this is going to get cropped, this is considered bleed room, so you're never going to see that. Um, the illustration is going to end like right there and, and right about there, so you're never going to see that anyway. And if you wanted to frame this, um, the framing would cover most of this. Now, I did go in a little bit deeper here, so I don't know if the frame would cover that. But if you're going to go for framing a piece of artwork, a lot of times people will put matting on it anyway, and the matting is custom, so you know, this would look really nice with the matting and then you bring the matting out to the next frame size up if you want to go to a standard size and, um, and there you go. Okay, this is the box where I store my sketches and my finished illustrations. Um, this box is, let me show you in here, it's obviously a bit bigger than my illustrations. This box is really intended for scrapbooking paper as you can see here, and that's why I originally purchased it. I was doing, well I wasn't scrapbooking, but I was using this paper for decoupaging, and I was storing my paper in here. When I started doing illustrations, I just took out my, um, my other papers, which I didn't have too much of at the time, and that's why I have this kind of bigger box. You could really use any kind of box. You could use one of those garment boxes um, that you get from like a department store, or you can get them from the dollar store, the kind that you put a shirt in, that kind of thing. Those would probably be a little bit snugger fitting, but they aren't as sturdy. Um, I keep a silica gel pack in here. You can get these out of vitamin bottles. You probably could purchase them somewhere, like from a packing supply or something. I keep that in there to keep the moisture out. And I keep my illustrations in numerical order. I don't know if you can see that, but anyway. So um, that way they're in order of how the story goes. And then I keep the sketches on top of them. Okay, that gives a little bit extra protection. But I want everything to stay in this nice neat stack because if these start 
if some start coming over here and over there, then they might not remain flat. They could possibly get dented or dinged. And here is a handwritten mock-up of the story, and I put little marks here when I've completed an illustration. I've actually got three left to complete, um, two of which are partway done, and one of which still has to be started from scratch. So that's where we're at right now.